do this. Got it, I got it, I got it. Right in the shoulder, middle of the body. In this section, we will be covering the dangerous game. Elephant, buffalo, the bears, lion, leopard, hippo, and the crocodile. Please remember, this information can be found in your SAM manual, so you can always refer back to that for guidance. We will also be looking at suitable choices of rifles and calibers. Next will be an examination of the anatomy of the species, and we will look at the various shot placement options. Finally, we will review field footage, where you will be able to interact and choose where to place the shot with the aid of a laser pointer. Before we move on to the individual species, let's take a look at the potential target areas referred to as the vital for life organ. First, there's the brain the computer of each animal. The brain is often the target of choice on several of these species, such as elephant, hippo, and crocodile. The brain shot is most often the last target of choice for lion, leopard, buffalo, and large bears. Unless, of course, you're getting charged, then all bets are off. The heart lungs will be the target of choice on most game species and is often used by professional hunters as a backup shot location for elephants. A shot to these organs will disrupt blood and oxygen flow to the brain and in most cases will result in almost certain death. For this reason, these will become our primary focus in the shot placement on the cats, buffalo, and bears. The spinal cord is the wire that connects the brain to the rest of the body. A direct hit to the spine will immobilize any game. Before moving on to each species, we want to emphasize the importance of both your ability to make rapid and accurate second and third shots in the right areas and allowing your guide or PH to make backup shots. You're about to see videos of several species lost to poor shooting ability on the first and second shots, all of which could have been prevented. For the purpose of shot placement, we will cover a typical shot encountered in a baiting situation. The true challenge on a leopard hunt is luring this wary predator onto a piece of meat he knows he did not kill, at a time and place of the hunter's choosing. In theory, if this is accomplished, you will have one of the easiest shots on your entire safari. Leopard hunting is a chess match of moves between the big cat and the hunter. Patience is a hunter's virtue in both waiting for the cat to come to the bait, then presenting himself for the perfect shooting angle. But the combination of the leopard's habit of coming into the bait at poor light and the adrenaline jolt that comes when the cat suddenly appears in the tree often make this shot more difficult than it should be. The leopard is a thinly skinned and lightly boned animal that succumbs to a well-placed shot from an adequate caliber. Our recommendations for the Leopard would be calibers in the 30-06 to 375 range. Remember, speed does not kill. Bullet placement does. A slower moving, heavier bullet often tends to transfer energy more quickly. Far more important is a quality scope that gathers a lot of light. An illuminated reticle is certainly an advantage in the low light conditions the Leopard is often taken in. Shot properly, your cat will be dead under the bait tree or recovered a short distance away. But shot poorly and you have now created one of the most dangerous situations in all of Africa. For the perfect broadside heart lung shot, come up the front leg from between a third to certainly no more than halfway up the body.
The lion is truly a symbol of wild Africa. Few experienced hunters would argue that the lion is among the most sought after trophies in the world. Many professional hunters rate the lion as the most dangerous of Africa's big five. After all, an animal that is capable of killing an 1800 pound Cape Buffalo bull will have little problem taking care of you. A mature male lion can push a scales to 500 pounds, stand four foot at the shoulder, and stretch to a height of nearly 10 feet. The lion must always be hunted with the utmost of caution and respect. While lion habitat and quota are shrinking across Africa, there are certainly still huntable populations in many countries, with Tanzania, Zambia, and Zimbabwe being the best choices for the hunter wishing to take this great game animal. 375 is the legal minimum caliber in most countries where lion are hunted, and it has been an excellent caliber for lions from its introduction in 1912. The lion, like the leopard, is thin-skinned and lightly boned, but his chest and pectoral muscles will require a well-constructed premium hunting bullet. While lions are occasionally hunted by tracking where conditions allow, the vast majority are taken by baiting. Baiting for lions is similar in design to a leopard hunt, with the goal of putting a big male into shooting position of a well-concealed blind. This takes bait, big bait, as lions, especially where several cats are feeding, can consume an enormous amount of meat. For this reason, big animals such as buffalo, hippo, and even elephant are favored by most professionals. In all likelihood, the shot at your lion will come in poor light conditions, as he will come to the bait late in the evening or leave the meal before the sun is completely up. And for these reasons, a top quality scope with an illuminated reticle is a distinct advantage. The shot at your line will be from a blind with a dead rest and generally at close range, usually between 60 and 100 yards. It's important to note that the line differs from many African game animals. Its shoulder and front leg bones are positioned far forward in the very front of the chest cavity. The ideal heart-lung shot on a broadside line will find you coming up the back edge of the front leg one-third up into the body. Due to the line's muscular frame and size, this shot is rarely immediate and the line will often make a short dash into heavy cover where he will need to be followed up. The blood trail will generally be heavy as a premium soft point will often exit and a short, although nervous, tracking job will soon bring you to your trophy if your aim was true. A full frontal shot is sometimes encountered on a line. In this instance, place your shot squarely in the center of the chest. With a well-maned line, extra caution must be applied, as the main hair will generally cover the entire chest area, and the general tendency is to aim too low. A wounded lion in thick bush is among hunting's most dangerous situations. Never take any shot on this big cat unless you are certain of your target. All of the world's bears, including grizzly, brown, Alaskan, Russian and Eurasian, polar and the black bear all qualify as dangerous game. Bears are fast, unpredictable, and under many circumstances, extremely aggressive. Dangerous situations can range from a sow protecting cubs, a bear protecting a food source, a bear surprised at close range, and of course, a bear that has been wounded. Undisturbed, a bear tends to be slow moving and methodical in their movements. But when motivated by fear or aggression, even the biggest bears move with surprising speed and agility. A scene from the movie The Revenant is a perfect example of what happens when everything goes wrong. All bears are muscular, large boned animals covered with a thick hide that is often wet from the elements. With the exception of the smaller black bear, a minimum 338 caliber with a premium soft nosed bullet is required. 
A better option, in our opinion, would be the 375 or even a 416. The bears of the world inhabit a wide variety of habitats and cover types. Shooting distances can vary from long shots in mountain country to close encounters in the thick cover found in coastal areas. For this reason, a variable scope in the three to nine power range is a great choice. On dark colored bears in poor light conditions, a scope with an illuminated reticle is a sound choice. For shot placement, follow behind the leg, one third of the way up from the bottom of the chest, and this will result in a killing shot on any bear. However, a shot that is too high or too far forward will reduce the chances of a clean kill and recovery are greatly reduced. While bear ribs are fairly light in stature, the shoulder blade is extremely strong. Their rib cage extends much farther back than a deer and protects their vitals, which also extend farther back. Most people are amazed when they see how far back the ribs of a bear actually extend. By aiming farther back and in the middle of the bear, from top to bottom, you will be assured a killing shot that will miss the shoulder blade and hit the vitals. For a bear that's aware of your presence, you may be presented with a frontal shot. From the bottom of the brisket, a shot placed in the center, a third of the way up will effectively take out the heart and travel further back into the lungs. Bears frequently stand in order to test both the wind and get a better view. However, a standing bear is never a preferred shot and should be avoided. The Cape Buffalo is generally the most numerous of Africa's dangerous game species. The combination of affordability and availability make him the most popular of all the Dark Continent's famous five. As a big game animal, the Cape Buffalo has no weakness. His eyesight is superb in all light conditions. His nose is second in ability only to the elephant and his hearing is on par with that of the wariest kudu bull. A big bull will carry up to 1,800 pounds on his massive frame of solid muscle and bone, and for this reason is considered by most professional hunters the single toughest animal on earth to kill. In most areas where he's hunted, he is a lover of heavy cover and is often found at close range in dense thickets where he has all the advantage. For this reason, most shots will be less than 50 yards. There are exceptions to this rule, such as the coastal swamps of Mozambique, where shots tend to be longer as cover is thin. A typical buffalo hunt involves tracking, and you will enjoy the magic of watching expert trackers practicing their ancient art. It is imperative that you stay close to your professional hunter at all times during this process because it is rare to catch a bull unaware in heavy cover, making target acquisition and readiness for the shot paramount. For Cape Buffalo, a 375 is the minimum legal caliber in the countries where he is hunted. No matter what the caliber, the first shot on your buffalo is all important. However, depending on the shooter's sensitivity to recoil, any of the 40 or 45 calibers like the 416 and 458 are also sound choices. Regardless of caliber, your first shot will generally be a well-constructed premium soft-nosed bullet. The correct bullet choice for a backup shot is open to much debate. We prefer solids as they offer maximum penetration from any angle. You should consult with your professional hunter as to his recommendations and follow his advice. As for the type of rifle best suited for buffalo, we generally recommend a bolt action rifle fitted with a lower power scope. While the double rifle is gaining in popularity today, the open sights will often limit your shot opportunities on buffalo, especially on bulls that are mixed up in herds. With that said, we enjoy hunting buffalo with a double rifle but we always take the tracks aware of certain limitations that the open-sided double presents. 
The goal of every professional hunter is to get his client a close range shot at a broadside buffalo bull who is completely unaware of your presence. Once this shot presents itself, your job is to place a shot directly into the buffalo's heart. Perfectly executed, even this shot will not drop a bull in his tracks. However, such shots are rapidly fatal and you will be admiring your trophy after a short follow-up. If your shot is slightly high, you will catch the lungs, but a lung shot bull requires a follow-up with a very real chance that the buffalo will be alive and require additional shooting when contact is made. While the broadside presentation is the perfect scenario, it is not always possible. If a bull is aware of your presence, he will generally face you, offering you a frontal chest shot. When viewed from the front, a buffalo's rib cage is shaped like the bow of a ship. For this reason, a frontal shot should be placed directly in the center of the chest. The only instances where a buffalo bull will collapse in his tracks is a direct hit to either the spine or the brain. However, due to the difficulty these shots present, they should never be the initial target of choice. Regardless of the shot you are presented, the need for fast and effective backup shots are essential. Here you must shoot and keep shooting as long as your target is visible. But use extreme caution in this instance and make sure you're on the right animal as things get confusing if other members of the herd are mixed up in the swirling dust of retreat. One final yet extremely important note. You should always allow your professional hunter to back up your shot as needed on Buffalo. The African elephant is the largest mammal on earth. At their largest, this awesome animal can weigh up to seven tons and stand 12 feet at the shoulder. Body size can vary greatly depending on the region with the largest bodied bulls found in Botswana and Namibia. Elephants are simply walking machines and move almost constantly with the ability to cover huge distances. Hunting methods can vary from classic tracking hunts in thick bush to spot and stalk techniques in more open country. An undisturbed elephant can generally be approached quite closely with shots of 25 yards and closer common. The 375 is the legal minimum caliber for elephant. However, we think you should consider larger calibers in the 416 or 458 range and larger. Due to the close range most elephants are taken at, this is one situation where an open-sided rifle has an advantage over the scope. Due to the massive bone structure and thick hide on an elephant, a solid bullet is the only sensible choice on this species. As to which action type is better for elephant hunting, the magazine rifle or the double rifle, I'll cover that in a minute as it relates to shot placement. The elephant hunter has three shot placement options. These are the side-on heart-lung shot, the side brain shot, or the classic frontal brain shot. For the inexperienced, the brain shot on elephant can generally be regarded as difficult and risky. This is due to the fact that an elephant's head is huge, while in comparison, the brain is quite small. So, trying to visualize the exact position of the brain within such a huge structure then placing a bullet on the outer skin surface where it reaches the brain is what makes this shot so difficult. Let's first discuss the side brain shot. The outer ear holes. The outer ear hole slit is the reference point for side on brain shots. And it is important to realize that one third of the elephant's brain lies behind the ear hole opening. A shot directly into the ear hole on a broadside elephant will often hit the rear portion of the brain, but the ideal placement is about a hand's width in front of the ear slit to dead center the brain. However, when shooting such tall animals at close range, shot angles and bullet trajectory must be considered. From side on, the bullet must penetrate about eight inches of skull to reach the brain. 
On the frontal brain shot, the distance from the forehead to the brain is long, about 18 inches. Then there are the roots of the tusks, which extend all the way up to the eye level. This creates a relatively small window through which a bullet must pass to reach the brain. And finally, it's the constantly changing position of the head and the question of compensatory angles which make the frontal brain shot so difficult. The head of an unsuspicious elephant will usually be held quite low. On such occasions, the frontal brain shot is usually not all that difficult, especially if the eyes and zygomatic bulges are used as reference points. All elephants have notoriously poor eyesight. As soon as they see something suspicious, they lift their heads to peer down at it. This changes all of the angles, and if a shot is taken at this stage, it will have to be placed a lot lower to compensate for this change in angle. From the front, only the eyes and the zygomatic bulges are reference points. Elephants also vary in height, as do hunters. This, together with different shooting distances and the constantly changing position of the head, ensures that there can be no standard shot placement site for an elephant frontal brain shot. To place such a shot correctly, try to imagine that an elephant has a broomstick through its head and out its ear holes. Regardless of the angle of the head, try to visualize just where on the forehead a shot would have to be placed to shoot the broomstick in half. For the inexperienced, this is usually not easy to do. The effects of a successful brain shot are dramatic. The hind legs always give way first, as the head is simultaneously lifted upwards and backwards. Compared to the brain shot, an elephant's heart-lung area is huge and easy to locate. They also succumb quickly to a well-placed heart-lung shot, even with the smaller but still legal calibers. From side on, elephants have a very well-defined armpit crease. Six inches, about a hand's length above the top of the crease, and a similar distance in front of it is the top of the heart and the center of the lungs. This is the proper position to place a side-on heart-lung shot. Backup shots are an extremely important part of elephant hunting. If ever an elephant fails to drop instantly to a brain shot, then some effective follow-up shots need to be placed immediately. If not, the elephant will get away and be lost. This is where the double rifle comes into its own and actually has an advantage over the bolt action rifle. The ability to deliver a quick second shot with a double rifle cannot be matched by even the most proficient bolt action shooter. The hippo was the last species to be added to the big six of African dangerous game by the African Professional Hunters Association. And the hippo offers an interesting hunt and a unique trophy. The bull hippo is a massive animal and can easily weigh up to three tons. Hippos are social animals and are often encountered in breeding herds or pods. Dominant bulls are strongly territorial. They defend their territories viciously and frequently make threatening displays. Distinguishing the sexes of hippo in the water is very difficult, and even experienced PHs don't always get it right. Due to the fact that hippos spend most of their time during legal shooting hours in the water, this is the shot you will most often be presented with. Again, the 375 is the minimum legal caliber for hippos and a scope-sided, bolt-action rifle in this caliber is an excellent choice for this animal. A well-constructed, soft-point bullet is perfectly adequate for a brain shot on a hippo in the water. However, when tackling a big bull on land, only a solid bullet should be used. When he's in the water, the brain shot is the only shot placement option. For such a large animal, a hippo's brain is surprisingly small. It's about the size of a man's fist and is situated high up, right at the very top of the head, between the ears and behind the eyes. When viewed from the side, just below the base of the short, stumpy ears is the back part of the hippo's brain. 
A side brain shot placed an inch or two in front of the base of the ears will switch off a hippo instantly. This is an extremely effective shot, but one with little margin for shot placement error. When viewed from the front, the brain is also easy to locate. Between and just above the bulging eyes is an inverted V formed by the eye sockets. Between this and a line joining the ears lies the brain. Just where to place a frontal brain shot depends on the angle of the head at the time. For a hippo found on land, a heart-lung shot can be considered. Place your solid bullet between one-third and one-half up the body using the rear edge of the front leg as your vertical line. If distance permits, a side brain shot on a hippo on land will bring him down instantly, but you better be close. Perhaps the most underrated big game animal in all of Africa is the Nile crocodile. These aquatic giants are well distributed in Africa's lakes and river systems. A mature bull crocodile can live in excess of 70 years and he is armed with a wide and effective array of survival mechanisms that make him a difficult trophy to secure. A croc has excellent eyesight, a surprisingly keen sense of smell, and superb hearing. A basking croc will rely on various birds, such as plovers, as alarm systems. The alarm cry of a plover will cause a sleeping crocodile to launch instantly into the water and safety. And if you hunt crocs enough, you will come to understand that in addition to his natural senses, a veteran crocodile seems to possess a well-tuned sixth sense that warns him of imminent danger. The two methods of taking a croc are cruising waterways until a suitable trophy is spotted and a stalk can be planned, or luring a big croc into a shootable position with bait. In most instances, the shot at your croc will be from a dead steady rest. The extremely small target area on a crocodile, combined with the fact that the croc will be near or partially in the water, makes this one of the most difficult shots on safari. A wounded croc that reaches the water will be lost, the trophy fee paid, and you will bitterly remember this event as one very expensive splash. Premium soft point bullets in 30 caliber and up with proper shot placement will anchor the largest of crocs. A quality scope of at least 10 power on a magazine rifle is essential for this hunt. Only two shots are recommended to reliably anchor a big croc. They are the brain shot and the spinal column shot just behind the head. A big croc's brain is about the size of a golf ball. It lies midway between the eyes and the ear ridges, about an inch or two behind eye level. When viewed from side on with the mouth closed, all crocodile have a distinctly visible smile at the corner of their mouth. The brain is situated just above the bend of the smile. This is the exact position to place a side-on brain shot. The only other option for anchoring a big croc is the forward neck shot, where the skull joins the spinal column. Placed correctly, such a shot is equally as effective as a brain shot. It will break the neck and sever the spinal cord just behind the head and this too will instantly anchor a big crocodile. Place this shot just a few inches beyond the tip of the smile in exactly the middle of the neck. Compensate accordingly for any shots that are to be taken when the croc is below eye level. As soon as a croc has been anchored, put in a couple of backing shots through the shoulders to break the leg bone. This should hopefully stop it from being able to stand up again and move off should it attempt to try. Because they are reptiles, crocodiles are notoriously hard to kill. They jerk and squirm around for a long time after apparently being brain dead. One final word and strong bit of advice. This is the one scenario in African hunting where you should absolutely request backup shots from your professional hunter. There is no tracking a wounded croc once he reaches the safety of his watery sanctuary. For those hunters in pursuit of the American alligator, everything covered with the crocodile would directly apply.